Hi, Karam. Thanks for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, I wanted to, first of all, sort of learn what you do more at Lolly Files and pick your brain on the very, very well received Figma for Lolly Files plugin that you made. Uh, so why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Lolly Files and sort of what led you to create the Figma plugin? It's great to be here. I'm Karam. I'm a full stack developer at Lolly Files. That basically means I build anything and everything related to web technology. That's not really all I do, but right now that is my role at Lottie Files. I've been with Lottie Files for maybe um, less than a year, half an year maybe. And it's really great working with some of the best programmers I've actually met so far. How long did it take you to build Lottie Files for Figma? And why in the first place did you guys even think to start building something like this? It took me about roughly two weeks to build a minimum viable product um, and maybe another week of bug fixing and um, just fine tuning the UI and the user experience. And two weeks, I guess, maybe like two to three hours a day I spend on the plugin. Generally, when you try to build a software, you try to find a proof of concept. It's either that or you build a software that you can actually use. And that's what we did. We needed to import some illustrations and SVGs into Figma. And we were pretty tired of um, downloading it, trying to find free websites to download the SVGs from. So we figured, hey, why not build a plugin that can just do this for us just within Figma itself? It would make our designers' lives much more easier. That's really how we came about for the idea for the Figma plugin. What were you hoping to achieve when you were creating this plugin for Figma? Obviously, you've talked about helping designers and stuff, but did you have any other stakeholders or people in mind that you would think might benefit from this? Initially, we were just thinking about helping the designers. We had a vast library of animations from Lottie files, and we figured if people could import just one single frame of an illustration or maybe maybe an icon into Figma, it would make the designers' lives easier. That's what we started off. But then afterwards, um, Figma released some cool new tricks and features that allowed us to build an entire workflow into the plugin, which would be released in the, in the upcoming version of Figma. So who I had in mind was initially, as I said, it was the designers and then there are other people involved, which are engineers. When you build an app, animators have to interact with designers. Designers have to interact with engineers, and the engineers will showcase their products to stakeholders. So I figured, hey, maybe this plugin could make workflow for these people easy as well. Talking about the workflow, there's also another side effect of the Figma plugin, per se the interoperability between the After Effects plugin, Lottie Files, and the Figma plugin. And by Lottie Files, I mean the LottieFiles.com website. These plugins that we've built actually function together. We've managed to create a small ecosystem where you can upload an animation to LottieFiles.com and have it available on the Figma plugin. You could create an animation from the After Effects plugin for Lottie Files and have it available on the Figma plugin as well. I think that workflow interoperability between the animator, the designer, and the engineer speeds up the development process. That's what I was really going for, to help these three stakeholders speed up the process of development. So you've spoken a bit about the building this whole Lottie Files ecosystem and making, sort of connecting After Effects, uh, LottieFiles.com, and Figma all together. Give me a little bit of a sense of what you and the team had in mind when you were building all this. The whole idea was to cut down speed, how much time that was um, being wasted from communicating which designs or which animations to pass on from the animator, which version of the animation should be passed on to the designer and from the designer to the engineer as well. And to make this process as seamless as possible so then you've talked about 
how all the stakeholders interact and what your aim was. Obviously, you've talked about sort of engineers as well. And I'm wondering, would the dream then be for Lotties to be supported in Figma so that an engineer doesn't even have to leave, or a designer doesn't even have to leave Figma to get that code? Precisely, precisely. So just now I talked about SVGs, but the Figma plugin is able to put GIFs into the Figma document as well. So how designers use GIFs in Figma is there's a feature called prototypes on Figma where designers showcase their final design for a product. And on the prototype, you would actually be able to see GIFs. Suppose there's a, there's a next button, which is animated when you click on it. The, the prototype would show the GIF, the animated GIF, sort of brings your prototypes to life per se. The dream really is for these GIFs to be replaced with Lottie's. So um, Figma for Lottie files supports GIFs. Um, and I know we were just talking about, you know, the dream would be for it to support Lottie's. I know maybe to people like you and I, that's an obvious, that would be an obvious advantage. But can you maybe tell people listening a bit more as to why Lottie's would be a better option than a GIF, even in Figma itself, like obviously not just on apps and websites, but in, within Figma? So right now, Figma doesn't support any form of any animations on the canvas, no on prototypes, except GIFs, Lotus are vector animations, which means you can scale it up and down however you like, and you can still maintain the same high quality. I think Lotus would be a good addition to Figma. I hope they're considering it. So talking a bit more about what went on in sort of your creation phase with the plugin, tell me how you went about things, what you picked, and sort of why you made those decisions. Well, when I started building the plugin, I first read up on the Figma API documentation and sort of had to decide between Vue.js and React.js. And I ended up writing the plugin in both <laughs> to make a comparison of which was better. But considering the fact that the trailer, the teaser on Twitter got a lot of attention. I figured I might have to scale this up for more than a thousand users and React is way more friendly in terms of large scale apps, mainly because of the, um, the flexible structure and also the, the hooks and context API that they recently introduced into, into the library. It made building the plugin much more easier compared to Vue.js where, where I was just using a global bus to write the variables around the entire app. The React project was way more structured, it was clean, it was easier to look at and understand. So I ended up going with React.js. In terms of how the Figma plugins themselves work, the plugin runs inside an iframe. So all browser technologies are available and it's basically a web app which runs inside Figma. If you're actually planning to write a plugin for Figma, the plugin API is quite simple. Their documentation is pretty thorough. Other than that, it's quite simple to write a Figma plugin. What would you like to be able to do within Figma that you can't do because of the limitations with, with Figma currently? Is there anything else other than what you spoke of before, which was having Lotties play within Figma? Other than that, I'd like to be able to add custom properties onto the properties panel, kind of like how when you, uh, there's a panel on the side, uh, on the right side bar where you can click on an element and then get its HTML or CSS. I'd like to be able to add uh, lottery related information into that panel. That would be nice to have. So I was hoping to add like uh, the lottery URL into the properties panel but we can actually add that stuff into the properties panel now. I just wrote that code over the weekend. Oh, cool. So if there's anyone out there who's considering making a plugin, um, what would you tell them that they have to consider before getting started? I think building a plugin should come out of a personal use because you never know if someone else is facing that issue. So that's a good reason to build a plugin as any. It's easy to build plugins, they're small apps, it's not large scale. So I think 
if there's a problem you're having within any software and the software allows you to write plugins, I think you should do it because it makes your life easier and it could end up making other people's lives easier as well. And then from a te technical standpoint, what would sort of be the foundations of an approach to, I mean, maybe let's talk in particular to Figma, building a Figma plugin. If you're building a plugin for Figma, you have to be familiar with how the plugin lets other applications run inside it, which means you have to go to the figma.com slash developers and read up on all the documentation that they provide. Uh, they're very thorough with their documentation. I think the most important part about building a plugin for Figma is understanding that there are certain pieces of JavaScript code that run inside the Figma sandbox. And then there's your app or your plugin, which sits in an iframe. And these two have to communicate together to, to make the entire plugin work. That's the key part of building a Figma plugin. And if I'm talking about the plugin itself, it's just a web app. You have your views, you have your state management, and you write it just as you would write any other React app. As a developer, what do you find um, the benefits are of using Lottie animations in the place of how we used to do it conventionally before Lottie came around? So when you look at websites, usually animations come up as GIFs or PNG sequences. But when you use these, what, what ends up happening is the page gets heavier, the page loads slower. So what Lottie does is, is it improves performance because it's a much smaller size. And on top of that, you can scale the Lottie animation to whatever size you want, and you could still maintain quality. I think the performance is a huge factor for any website. Google ranks your websites lower if it's lower performance, if it's heavier, basically. And also the added bonus when you use a Lottie animation is you can actually interact with the animation via code which means you can do micro, micro interactions. I think that's the term designers use, micro interaction. When you click on a button, the color changes, or maybe when you scroll, the color changes, or maybe the animation plays along with the scroll and it's hooked onto the scroll. These are things that are just not possible with GIFs or PNG sequences. This whole interaction part of Lottie is a huge win. For you as a developer, have you found implementation a lot easier in comparison to previous like previous animations that existed before Lottie? Oh, definitely. You can have one animation where multiple images would have shown up. And I think the New York Times is a good example of this because the New York Times, they used to have two websites. They used to have um, a black colored website, which is dark mode, and then a white website, which was um, light mode, yeah. so. The New York Times, they actually kept two entire repositories of code just for the two websites. But once Lottie came about, all they had to do was change the color of the Lottie on their logo or whatever, whatever animations on their website. When the time changed via code, you could actually change the color of the animation. You didn't have to switch to a whole new website. I think Lottie files, the website itself is a testament to the adaptation of Lottie. There are creators putting up animations to be able to download them for free every day. There's hundreds of Lotties being created every day. On top of that, companies like Google, Airbnb, and even the local ride hailing company Grabka is using Lottie files. Mm, any closing words? Any words of wisdom to your new fans? Yeah, just keep on writing code. <laughs>